Hi, thank you so much for joining me. I want to have a conversation that combines electron configurations and orbital diagrams along with um, some of the information we can now gain from those models and learn to answer some of the types of questions that might be posed of the atom that is revealed in those models. So we're going to start with strontium. Not sure why, but strontium is one of my favorite elements. And so let's start by doing the electron configuration of strontium. I want to um, work this up in the periodic table so you get another example. You can see that clearly. So strontium is right here. Actually, one of my students' middle name was Strontium. Isn't that funny? Um, maybe that's why it's probably one of my favorites, because he was a, a very special student. Okay, so remember we have the S, P, D, and F blocks. So we start up at the beginning here, right? And we're going to do 1S2. And then we're going to start back here at the beginning on the left and do 2s2. You're going to cross the ravine and hit 2p6. And then start here, 3s2. Cross the ravine to 3p6. And then we're going to do 4s2. Now here's where we're going to kind of go down a bit of a hill. And we take away 1, it becomes 3d and minus 1 for the D block. And 3D10, go back up. We've got 4P6, and then we end at 5S2 for our um, strontium atom. So that's how we would get the electron configuration of that strontium atom, right? Now, to do an orbital diagram, I, I do it left to right in terms of energy. <clears throat> it's a little, I don't know, a little more of a hassle, um, but it gives you some good information. So make sure you know the difference between an electron configuration and an orbital diagram. So 2s, and there's two electrons in there, and then there's 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for the 2p, and then there's 3s electrons, and then there's 3p. We need three orbitals to hold six electrons. Notice I'm following Hund's rule and Pauli exclusion principle. And then I've got 4s2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 10 electrons. Those need five orbitals. Five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 1, 2, 3 for the 4P, 6. And then finally, I've got my 5S2 electrons. That is kind of a hassle to draw that all out, but there's often information. We see um, whether or not electrons are paired or unpaired via that orbital diagram. So it's a very important model. Now, we're following Aufbau's principle. So that means that the last electrons, that last sublevel, are our highest energy electrons. So the 5s2 electrons are our highest energy. Now, valence electrons are our outermost s and P electrons. So in this case, my outermost are also that 5s2 electrons. You find your highest n, and then it's the s and p electrons in that highest n. In our case, our highest n is 5. So strontium has two valence electrons. Now, Strontium is a metal, and when metals become ions, they tend to lose electrons to become cations, All right? So strontium would lose two electrons. In doing so, it becomes just like the previous noble gas, which is a very stable um, structure. So 
metals, the representative S&P block, representative metals, lose electrons to be like the previous noble gas. So if I wanted to do my electron configuration for the strontium ion, it would lose these 5s2 valence electrons, okay? And it's, so this would be its electron configuration. Now, the next question, I need to do a little bit of an eraser here. I'm trying to not have to write things over and over again. So let me clean that up a little bit. Okay, so now the question is, would the cation be larger or smaller than the original? Well, the atom ended at n equals 5. The ion ends at n equals 4. Since n gives us distance, that means the ion is smaller. So the radius of cations is less than the radius of the atom. <clears throat> when we lose these two electrons, we reach a noble gas configuration. So the strontium ion has the same electron configuration as krypton, the previous noble gas. Okay, let's do another example. We're going to write the electron configuration for sulfur. So let's go back to our periodic table. Sulfur would be right below oxygen which would be right here on the periodic table. Okay. Let me get myself the right writing room that I need. So this would be right here on the periodic table. So let's start at the beginning. You start at 1s. Boy, you're probably wondering by now, we're writing the same thing over and over and over again. Isn't there an abbreviated way we can do this? And the answer to that is yes but you'll typically be asked for the whole electron configuration because that's what the teacher wants to know is can you do an entire electron configuration, okay? But 1s2 and then 2s2 cross the ravine into the 2p block, 2p6, start at the left, 3s2, cross the ravine, we're in the 3p block, and we go one, two, three, four steps in. So it would be 3P4. And that would be the electron configuration of sulfur. I like to do, personally, my electron configurations and then do my orbital diagrams from that because the periodic table does such a beautiful job of doing that. So that would be my electron configuration for sulfur. So if I did my orbital diagram, I need 1S with two electrons, and I'm going energy left to right when I do this, and then 2s with two electrons. And if I have six electrons, I need three orbitals in a p sublevel. Notice I'm following Hund's rule, 3s, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And that, whoops, that should be an S there, not a P. And this is the 3P. Hello, Dina. Okay. Now, I want you to notice that what this orbital diagram does a much better job than an electron configuration is, is it shows you unpaired electrons very clearly. And that's quite an important concept in the atom. Okay. Now, highest energy electrons were the last ones you were filling. So the last sublevel we were filling was that 3p4. So our highest energy electrons are the 3p4. Now to find our valence electrons, you find your highest n value, which in this case is 3, and it's the s and the p electrons that count as valence. So sulfur has six valence 
electrons. Sulfur is a non-metal. And when non-metals become ions, they're winners, so to speak, in this electron game. And they're going to gain electrons. And the goal is to be like the next noble gas. So if sulfur simply gained two more electrons, okay, it would have a noble gas configuration. And let's clean this up for you a little bit. So sulfur, when it becomes an ion, gains two electrons. So if it became, if it gained two electrons, instead of a four there, I'm going to put a six. And now it is isoelectronic, same configuration as argon. Okay, so watch these words, all this vocab in here. Okay, now the size of this is a little trickier than it is with the cations. And here's what has happened. We had, let me do that outer um, diagram there. Remember, we had one, two, three, four electrons. To become like the next noble gas, it gained two electrons. Well, those added electrons cause repulsion. And that repulsion pushes electrons away, pushes them out. So we push them out further from the nucleus. And so anions are larger. So the radius of an anion is larger than the radius of its parent atom. Okay, now one more word here. When we did the strontium ion, that's how we would write it, it's simply called the strontium ion. When we do anions, we change the name. So we gained two electrons, it now becomes the sulfide ion. You drop the end and add IDE when you make its ion. It's always helpful to just get a little bit of glimpse of the future of naming as we are working with you know, all of this structure and function. So, wow, that was a lot. I hope I was clearing things up and certainly not muddying the waters. Good luck with chemistry.